if you can't even do household chores, get out? Angry. Mike yelled at me. Ousted from my night shift. I tried to muster up energy. Mike always thinks only about himself. But Terry, fine. I'll clean up and leave. That night. Hello? I answered the phone, and I heard Mike's frantic voice. Catherine, where are you now? Mike pressed urgently. In that moment, a smirk crossed my face. My name is Catherine Taylor. I'm 55 and work as a nurse. My only family is my husband, Mike. Mike works for a major beverage company and always finishes his work by 6 p.m. Mike hates inefficiency and values his personal time. So he doesn't care if others are working overtime. I met Mike through mutual friends. Soon after meeting, I was drawn to Mike because before we married, Mike was always kind to me. For instance, when we walked together, he'd always walk on the side closest to the traffic. And when I carried shopping bags, he'd always offer his help. Do you need help? If it's heavy, I'll carry it. Saying this, he'd promptly take the bags. Thank you. I was truly grateful for Mike's kindness. On our third date, we decided to start dating. Again, half a year into dating. Mike proposed, honestly. I thought it was a bit quick, but by then, I had fallen deeply in love with him. So, I responded to his proposal with, I want to marry you too. Hearing my answer, Mike looked thrilled. I'm so happy. Let's be together forever. All right. But that, he smiled at me. Seeing his smile, I naturally grinned too. Fictions being with him. I believed our married life would be filled with joy. Back then, I had no doubts about that. But soon after our wedding, Mike started showing his true colors. It seemed he had been wearing a mask before we got married. After our wedding, the kindness and consideration vanished. For starters, Mike wouldn't lift a finger around the house. He acted like the stereotypical dominant husband. The household chores are your job, isn't it? Don't be lazy. This became Mike's catchphrase. Even when I was swamped with chores, Mike would just ignore me and watch TV. That men fight in the workplace. Supporting that is your job, he'd say, without doing anything. He just throws the newspaper open and reads with a pompous attitude. I work as a nurse too, you know? My job has long hours and night shifts, so I have less free time than Mike, who works a nine to five. And Mike expects me to cover half of the living expenses, apart from the mortgage. Because of that, I can't just be a stay-at-home wife. I once confronted Mike about it. I work too, you know. Can't you at least help out a bit around the house? I'm not even asking for half. That's what I pleaded with Mike. But he never took me seriously. Mike just scoffed and laughed. You think you're really working as hard as a full-time job? Don't get too full of yourself for a woman. You're not even doing much. If you're gonna keep complaining, how about I kick you out? His words left me speechless. If Mike kicked me out, I wouldn't have a place to stay. My parents are gone, so there's no family home to return to. The hospital I work at doesn't provide housing, 
so I was afraid of ending up on the streets. Visit Sectis Chation and the area where I lived back then, affordable motels weren't really a thing. So, all I could say was, I'm sorry, Dex from then on. I did everything Mike said. All the household chores became my responsibility. But Trent, now after more than 20 years of marriage with Mike, a new problem has emerged. It's a financial issue. Again this month, the living expenses aren't in the account. I said, going pale as I checked the bank statement. And Sabam like, am I split the living expenses? We both contribute an equal amount to a joint account, and from there we pay for utilities, groceries, and the like. Ike took care of the mortgage entirely. Until recently, this system worked, but now there's a problem. Mike stopped contributing to the living expenses. One day, the property management company informed us that they couldn't process the rent payment. When I checked, ex half of the living expenses hadn't been deposited. I assumed he had just forgotten, so I casually asked. You haven't transferred this month's living expenses, have you? He didn't seem concerned at the time and just replied. Oh, I forgot. Can you cover for me just this time? So, without any suspicion, I transferred the missing amount from my savings. But when this kept happening, I grew suspicious. Something's off. It was also a big strain on my finances to keep covering for him. And Lee, I decided to confront my Mike, the living expenses haven't been transferred again this month. Mike, who was watching TV, looked back at me and casually replied, Cover for me, will ya? I'm watching a good part here. And to interrupt. Then he went back to watching TV. After a while, I heard Mike laughing loudly at the TV. I reached my breaking point. Enough is enough. We're talking about something important here. I can't keep covering the living expenses for you. Please, just transfer the money. I shouted at the top of my lungs. Suddenly, the once calm Mike burst out in anger. He glared at me fiercely and said, Don't you ever think about treating me with respect? All you talk about is money, and you've got to learn when to stop joking around. Mike said, his face flushed with anger. I was taken aback by Mike's sudden outburst. After all, it was Mike who suggested splitting the living expenses in half. So, I retorted, what do you mean by respect? You work for a major corporation, you probably earn more than me, right? What are you spending all your money on that you can't even cover living expenses? I asked Mike, I work part-time to limit the number of night shifts I have to do, but because of this, I work more day shifts than a full-time employee. Mike has a managerial position. So, he should definitely be earning more than me. Yet, his inability to pay half the living expenses is suspicious. I wonder what he's spending his money on. I stared intently at Mike, and he lashed out in return. It's my money. I can do whatever I want with it. Just shut up and do as you're told. I'm paying the mortgage on this house, remember. I'm in a bad mood. I'm gonna head out. Be sure to contribute your share. At that parting shot, Mike stormed out. Given the situation, 
it seems unlikely that he will contribute to this month's living expenses. Ah, uh, but the uncertainty, with no end in sight, left me sighing. Ever since, Mike hasn't been contributing to the living expenses. It's been over a year now. Maybe this marriage has run its course. I found myself whispering such thoughts more often. Mike and I have been together for over 20 years. There's affection between us, of course. But he doesn't help with housework. That's my working at a big corporation and supposedly earning a good salary. He doesn't contribute a single dime to the household. It really makes me wonder what value he brings to this marriage. However, the house is in Mike's name. Ike handles the mortgage payments. So, whenever things don't go his way, he'd threaten, You want me to kick you out of this house? Is that what you want? He probably knows that'll keep me in line. At Schmeichmeister's, if it came to a divorce, it's a given that I'd be the one to leave. It's with no family to turn to. I'm at a loss for what to do. Then, one Sunday. And Vaughn. I just finished a rare night shift and had returned home. It was past 10 o'clock, and there was no sound coming from Mike's room. He must still be asleep, because our lifestyles are so different. We sleep in separate rooms. I quietly went into my room so as not to wake Mike. And then an hour into my sleep, I was jolted awake by a loud banging on my door. Hey, Catherine, you're back, aren't you? Open up, Mike kept banging on the door. I've only slept for an hour, rubbing my sleepy eyes. I opened the door. What's wrong? But when I asked Mike that, he glared at me. Then, with a condescending tone, he snapped back. Must be nice sleeping in all morning, huh? Bed up and make my breakfast. That's your job, isn't it? Stung by Mike's rudeness. I shot back. It's got back from a night shift, and they've only slept for an hour. As for breakfast, I made something last night and put it in the freezer. Can't you just microwave it yourself? My head was pounding from lack of sleep. Whenever I have a night shift, I always prepare and freeze Mike's meals in advance. Except in the past, I've asked Mike a few times just to reheat his food. So, you always try to skip out on housework, adjust to my waking hours, and have a hot meal ready right away. House chores are your job, aren't they? Besides, this place is a mess. That up and at least clean up. Mike raised his voice and yelled at me. Normally, I apologize right away, but that day I had a terrible headache and was exhausted. So, I inadvertently let my true feelings slip out. I'm exhausted too, so let me rest a bit. It's just reheating food. Even you can do that. Mike, can't you? Mike looked down on me with a huff and laughed. You think you can talk to me like that? I'll kick you out, Mike sneered. He probably expected me to obediently do as he said. But I wasn't going to let it slide. I firmly replied, but my guest, Seeing that I wouldn't listen, Mike's face quickly turned beet red. If you can't even handle household chores, get out. I don't need a wife who can't cook or clean properly. He shouted at me, fueled by his anger. I mustered the strength from my exhausted post-night shift body. 
Mike always thinks only of himself. Maybe I should just leave such a husband. I'm fine. I'll pack and leave, I declared to Mike. You don't have the guts to leave this house. I'm gonna go out. I won't be back for a while, so you better reflect and clean up, Mike commanded. Perhaps he thought I couldn't leave. I couldn't leave because I have no family home. But he's mistaken. I'm not the kind of woman to stay silent after hearing such words. I've had over 20 years of grievances with him. Now seems like a good time to strike back. Mike really needs to reflect. I muttered. The chinle. I received multiple calls from Mike. Like from Mike again. I ignored Mike's calls. But he kept calling back almost every minute. Seems like Mike was panicking as the phone just wouldn't stop ringing. I reluctantly answered. Hello. As soon as I picked up, I heard Mike's frantic voice. Catherine, where are you? Mike pressed. At that moment, I let out a chuckle. I'm at a motel now, so what? I calmly replied. A motel? I could hear Mike's shocked voice over the phone. Of course, he never expected me to leave. As soon as Mike left, I started packing. I put essentials like clothes and valuables into my suitcase. At the same time, I called the handyman service. I want to sell all the appliances and furniture in the house right now. I made such a request to the handyman. Luckily, I contacted a service that also does emergency services, so they were quick to respond. I'm truly grateful they completed the job in just a few hours. There were some additional charges for the emergency service and a fee for some disposals, but I was able to make some money, so I had no complaints. Looks all cleaned out, huh? The inside of the house was completely emptied. All the furniture and appliances were gone, and the rooms felt so empty. The only things left in the room were Mike's clothes and personal belongings. Seeing the house in that state, Mike raised his voice in anger. How am I supposed to live like this? Indeed, with even the washing machine and fridge gone, it would be a struggle. But that's not my problem. So? I replied with a laugh. Huh. But all that furniture and appliances. I bought them. I think it's my business if I sell them. I did leave your things in place, didn't I? Well, that's Mike seemed flustered. Perhaps because I had hit a nerve. Just all the furniture and appliances in the house were bought with the money I saved when I was single. When we got married... My kid told me, I'm gonna buy the house, so you buy all the furniture and appliances. Back then, actually peepers, I had no objection since Mike was buying the house, which was a major purchase. Or over, Mike worked for a major company, making it easier to get approved for a mortgage. So... I thought it was best to do as Mike said. That's why I bought all the furniture, including from Mike's room. Given this background, that the furniture and appliances were originally mine. There's no problem in disposing of them. When I explained calmly, Mike shouted, thinking pretty highly of yourself, huh? This running away from home act is only for now. If you don't apologize right now, it's divorce. Buy new furniture and appliances immediately. 
bitch. If you come back and apologize, sincerely, maybe I'll let you back in the house. I smirked in a triumphant manner, but I wasn't phased at all. Fine by me if you want a divorce. In fact, I think you'd be the one in trouble if we divorced. Lily, you're in debt, aren't you? I coolly exposed Mike's secret. How did you know that? Mike was clearly shaken. I happened to find a bunch of overdue notices when I was cleaning up your room today. I calmly conveyed. Both the handyman and I were shocked when we found numerous overdue notices under Mike's bed. Vertent, when we hesitantly opened one of the envelopes, it revealed a debt of several tens of thousands of dollars. Furthermore, it seemed he borrowed from multiple lenders, with the interest amounting to a significant sum. The reason for the debt was probably stock trading. I say this because we found documents from a brokerage firm, along with the notices. He must have made significant losses in stock trading. Upon hearing this, I confessed, looking defeated. At first, everything was going well. But then I took a huge loss, and no matter how hard I tried to recover, things just didn't work out. Mike's voice grew softer and softer. I heaved a deep sigh. Exec sexually distance. The reason he had been defaulting on our living expenses recently was probably to repay this debt. The interest alone is astronomical, and it must consume his monthly salary. I tear any more since we're gonna divorce anyway. I muttered under my breath. Then, Mike quickly retorted, Are you saying you're okay with divorcing me? Sure. I have debts, but I can handle that with my retirement money. I've worked for decades and will have a hefty pension. Plus, I'm an elite executive at a major corporation. You won't find a husband with such good credentials ever again. Mike has always taken pride in working for a big corporation. That's why he always acts so smug. I can't believe he's still boasting like this. I asked Mike while trying to hide my disbelief. You're only gonna have that big corporate title for a little while longer, right? You're retiring in a few months. Don't you lose that title, what value will you have? What did you say? Mike responded angrily. I boldly told him the truth. Edgars, you don't help with house cores, don't contribute to the household into the household expenses, and now there's debt your value isn't zero. It's negative you're not a catch, you're a liability, as I made my stance clear Mike fired back. Don't mess with me, the company has a for hiring program, and I'm an elite, I'm still valuable to the company. Just mentioning where I work makes me popular with the ladies. Unlike your physical job, I earn my keep with my brain. Mike said with a smug expression, Don't mock my job. Nursing is a noble profession, always being there for the patients. I won't be looked down upon by you. And isn't the rehiring program gonna be tough? For you, especially if you can't even keep up mentally. I stated calmly, what do you mean Mike's voice trembled slightly? You always leave work on time, right? Despite others working overtime, I doubt a company would want such an uncooperative person. And from what I've heard with the rehiring program, the pay often drops. Significantly, how are you gonna pay off the debt upon hearing my words, Mike?
looked devastated seems like Mike didn't do his homework on the rehiring program. I saw some documents about it in our room and with Mike's current conditions, it's gonna be tough, especially regarding... The pay was surprised Mike hadn't looked into it and was aghast at his naivety. What will happen to me if the rehiring program doesn't work out? I'll lose my title as an elite at a major corporation. Mike's confident tone was gone replaced by a weak and desperate voice. That's not my problem. And by the way, I've been working part time, but from next month, I'll be working full time. I don't need to look after you anymore. The retirement age at my hospital is 70. So I've got a long time to work as I distanced myself. Mike's voice grew desperate. You got a full-time position, so you'll be earning more than before, Mike asked, with hope in his voice. Well, yes, I'll be earning more, plus I'll get bonuses, as I answered, Mike desperately said. I'm sorry for everything. Let's start over with just my resources. I can't pay off the debt, it's too late to find. Another job elsewhere, at my age. Please help me, Mike's sudden shift in attitude took me aback. I'm not going back to you, it seems you're just clinging to me for your own benefit. I rejected Mike, don't... Say that we've been together for over 20 years. I need you, Catherine. If things continue like this, I'm gonna be in big trouble. Are you saying you don't care what happens to me? Mike appealed with tears in his eyes. Being the future without his elite title, facing a mountain of debt, he must be desperate. Probably no one else can help Mike but me. Yet, I felt no pity for him. I don't have a shred of pity for Mike. Emotionally, he's already a stranger to me. Just like how I struggled for over 20 years. I felt like it was Mike's turn. We'll go through the lawyers. I just wanted to say that, and I hung up the phone. After that, our divorce was finalized smoothly. I believe things went smoothly because we went through a lawyer. Mike is easily swayed by titles and authority. So in front of an attorney, he probably couldn't put up much of a fight. Plus, Mike had something to feel guilty about. In fact, I later learned through the attorney that Mike's actual debt wasn't just a few thousand dollars. Brain beyond the collection notices I saw, he seemed to have several other debts. And says according to the lawyer, Mike is going through bankruptcy proceedings. It seems he's reached a point where he can't repay. Soon after, his company found out and Mike got the boot. Mike had been defaulting on his loan repayments. Of course, he hadn't been paying his mortgage either. It seems he had been using all of his salary on gambling instead of repaying his debt. So, he hadn't even been paying the interest. Mike apparently thought, I'm gonna increase the money and repay all the debt at once. As a result, his company began receiving collection calls. Bring more than once. But with all these disruptions, they decided it was best to let him go. I'm really glad I divorced Mike. I've received several contacts from Mike, all through the attorney. Partly due to his bankruptcy, Mike has had to give up his house. Mike, having lost his job and everything, wants my help. It seems he's in quite a tight spot on his own. Of course, I've politely declined through the lawyer. After all... Mike and I are already divorced. 
I really wonder how he can even think to ask such a thing now. Big sense then, I've continued working as a nurse. The recent change is that I moved closer to the hospital. In fact, I bought a small apartment. It's an older building, so I got it for a real bargain. This apartment is my own little castle. There's no fear of being kicked out by anyone. That alone brings me a lot of comfort and happiness. My current joy is looking for cute furnishings that match my apartment. Today, I'm using my day off to visit some home decor shops. This is so cute. I found a delightful candle that made my heart flutter. There might be more challenges in the future, but I have a place to come home to. I to protect that place, I'll keep working hard every day. That's what keeps me going.